everybody, this is Frankie Abrazino with the Uncensored Report on this lovely Sunday morning. And I want to talk a little bit about the saber rattling that's been going around throughout the world. And should we be concerned about some uh, provocation leading to an all-out war or a World War III for that matter? And if you just look at the globe in its entirety, you got Iran. They're out there conducting these provocative missile tests. They're running their armed speedboats up to our ships, making them change course just last week. Uh, just actually this week. Yeah, because we're still in it. Um, that's in the Middle East. You also have Syria. You have the situation in Iraq where we're sending a military over there into the uh, rock area um, of Syria where that's the stronghold, the capital of ISIS. You have the military sending um, B-1, B-2 bombers over to South Korea in response to um, the North Korea firing off the missiles towards Japan and very near Japan, which is obviously not going to make that region too, um, too happy since those are nuclear-capable um, bombers. And then you got China. They're livid that the U.S. carrier has the gall to go over there in these contested waters. Waters they don't even own, the China Sea. Waters they're trying to say they own. Um, waters that they're building their own. They've created this island and they're building their own military strip there and the military command base. It's upsetting the Philippines. Uh, it's upsetting, um, God, what's that one country? Vietnam. Everybody in that region is causing instability. Um, so across the globe, a lot of people are, a lot of leaders are out there rattling their sabers. And the fear is that a lot of this saber rattling could eventually lead to war. What will Trump do? Will he show a tough image out there or will he take tough action um, without going over the edge and essentially going into a conflict with these countries? And if you look at all of them, Iran. You know, you got the headlines, like I said, out there about their ballistic missile test. Um, you didn't see a lot of information or media put out there about the ship, that speedboat that made our ship change course. But that's out there. It's, it wasn't highly, it wasn't reported. It was right after that missile test. I believe it was the next day. Um, how will Trump respond? They're provoking us. What will he do? Will he escalate the situation? Um, he's got to do something. He doesn't want to look weak, but he doesn't want to come across as too tough to um, basically um, and flare up this situation into a major conflict. You have several hundred Marines that are in Syria, like I said, over in the city of Iraq, where that's where ISIS's capital is. We got another 1,000 troops could be sent to Kuwait to join the uh, fight against ISIS over there. Um, not in Kuwait, but primarily to go into Iraq and push them out. Um, China, like I said, they're spitting mad over um, the South China Sea, and it's not just that. They're upset about South Korea allowing the United States to put their THAAD, T-H-A-A-D, that's the acronym, missiles defense system on their soil. They are not happy. And if you listen to China's me media, they're over there saying, hey, a nuclear war could break out here. And we're not ruling that off. It was just report. I just put it out today with Sputnik, and I think it came out yesterday. Actually, it's been coming out slowly all week that North Korea has the intercontinental um, ballistic missiles that could reach the United States with a nuclear warhead. They have not been tested yet, and the U.S. is aware of them. And then I put out an article by Sputnik today that ex um, went further into that issue. Um but, what, you know, we got to do something. The United States needs to do something because the North Koreans are out there. They're rattling their sabers. Even Japan, I think last week I put out an article about Japan saying, look, we're going to study the first strike uh, concept, maybe perhaps against North Korea because they're getting really nervous. And, you know, it's one thing to go out there and on uh, South Korea deploy that THAAD system which is going to upset everybody. But now that we're flying these strategic B-1, B-2 bombers over there with, that are nuclear capable um, to show us uh, solidarity and a show of force for South Korea, it's just pissing everybody us off. Um, so what will happen? You know, Trump's out there. He's openly stated that the options are on the table, including strikes, including uh military strike or and at that point if you do a military strike it's going to be war especially with that nut job in korea 
And it's been more than, what, 60 years since they called for a ceasefire? And believe it or not, we're still at war. I think we have, what, 50,000 U.S. soldiers on that DMZ line because they're, we're essentially in a truce. That war never ended with Korea. Um, and we need China's support. China's trying to sit, tell people, China's out there saying, look, you guys are coming out ahead. Something's going to happen. You need to calm down. Everything's going downhill. But it's hard because China's even more pissed at us. They're extremely upset with Trump, especially with him sending the Navy carrier uh, USS Carl Vinson group over to the South China Sea a few weeks ago. And, it, and like I said, in their media, in the Chinese media, which is basically spinning out the government propaganda, they're openly talking about war with the United States over the South China Sea. Yet how many Americans... How many Americans out there probably don't know about the South China Sea, have no idea about this island that they've created, and have no idea how high the tensions are due to that? How many Americans out there, uh, they probably know more about North Korea because that's in the major media more. Um, how many know about those troops, a thousand being sent over to Kuwait soon? How many know, didn't know about the hundreds of troops we have in Syria already? I bet a lot of you don't. And I understand we need to look tough, but eventually a lot of people like myself are concerned. Will the toughness go too far as the things in the Middle East continue to escalate? It's just a matter of time before it erupts. How about over, you, you know, do you look at the Middle East? Let's not forget what's happening over there with Israel. And even in Egypt, I put out a, a story, the, an article the other day about how ISIS in Egypt is uh, growing ever stronger there. And there's a lot of concerns there. Ever since the Muslim Brotherhood was knocked out of power when they took over during the coup, the military branch came in. ISIS has been growing stronger and stronger in Egypt, but nobody's paying attention to this stuff. Our relations with Russia aren't that great, even though everybody says that Trump's a Russian actor, that which is bullcrap. There's nothing to support it, but the media continues to push that propaganda. Our relations with them are going on a downhill slide. And then, like I said, China, China has been deteriorating. But China, you know, the problem with China is they're in such financially bad shape. I don't even know how that country is running. And war might be an option for them, as it is with most people. They always tune into that uh, war machine out there. And so, you know, I'm sure all of us, myself included, we hope for peace. But we should not turn the blind eye to the signs that are out there. The signs that are emerging throughout this planet. And if you look back in history, not too many people anticipated World War I, although they should have because all the leaders, all the royalty, because it was all royalty back then in Germany, uh, England, France, Russia, uh, even in Austria where it started, they, uh, they were wanting the war. But the people, the masses didn't expect it. And the same with World War II. Nobody anticipated that. Um, it, but they should have. The signs were there, but they didn't anticipate it. Just like the signs are here, but they're not anticipating it. And so a lot of people are feeling that's the same thing holds true here. And could we be on that slow, um, unidentified march towards World War III? What say you? This has been Francesco Abruzzino with the Uncensored Report.